Yes. Everyone yes. is on? Okay. Good evening to everyone, to the people in India and those people in America, good morning. For me here, uh, time is 6 a.m. California time. I'm in uh, San Diego. And in India, time is 6.30 p.m. So I am um, so thrilled to invite all the speakers today, the elite panel, to join us to discuss Save These Saviors program. The reason why I started this program is every day I have been seeing that so many doctors are being attacked, hospitals being attacked, both physically as well as mentally. There is a mental abuse, physical abuse. Um, it's very, very difficult for people like us doctors who want to provide good care and then if we live in fear for whatever reason it is. So for that reason, this initiative was started. And today um, we have our speakers to join us to discuss how to prevent these attacks and to actually understand why this problem actually exists. Let me introduce you, Dr. Tarun Chaudhary from Ayush Hospitals in Vijaywada. He is the director in the emergency department. And then Dr. Batalwar, um, who is a top executive at uh, Leilavati Hospitals until a couple of days ago. And then now I think he has taken the role as a CEO, I believe at Mittal Hospital in Mumbai, I believe. So uh, we welcome you. And then Dr. Rajesh Gundamatla, who is uh, a well-known surgeon in Hyderabad, Sunshine Hospitals, very skilled in his profession. And uh, I know him as my classmate also, a very good person. And uh, Mr. Subhakar, who also I, uh, uh, know him for the past few years, and I met him actually when I came in uh, came to India in 2018. Um, he works at Apollo Hospitals in uh, Hyderabad, I believe, still. Yes. In healthcare management. Um, so we invite everyone. Thanks so much, and I need to recognize Miss Srinija Ramachandra and Nagesar Rao behind the scenes and journalist Seshu to help us understand this problem, to actually uh, arrange this program. There's a lot of background work needed. I really appreciate them to do all this. Now, I think we also have <laughs> a special guest joining us, <laughs> uh, Ram Gopal Varmagaru. Uh, I requested him just 10 minutes ago, sir, if you have time, even if you join for a few minutes to share your perspective, we'll be very happy. So I think he's trying to connect his audio. Sir, um, a warm welcome to RGV, sir. And uh, yeah, so let's talk now. <laughs> I'm going to shut up. With, I'm going to say one thing before I shut up, which is uh, this kind of problem, the uh, attacks on doctors is not new. I was actually reading a journal article and uh, it said, no physician, however conscientious or careful, can tell what they are, are. He may not be the object of some underserved attack, malicious accusation, blackmail, or lawsuit. Well, essentially what he's saying is physicians are worried that they are going to be either attacked or they are going to be sued. And do you know when was this article published? Anyone wants to take a guess? 1892, 1892, how many, 130 years ago? Huh? <clears throat> so they were talking about it long back, more than a century ago. This was published in JAMA, you know, Journal of American Medical Association. So think about it. It has been there, this problem. So with that, I let 
Um, sir, Dr. Batalver, can you hear me? Hello? Dr. Batalver, can you hear me? He, he's on mute, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he's on another. Oh, yeah, there he is. Another, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, he got into a different uh, window there. Good. Hello, sir. Warm, warm welcome to this program. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So, uh, anyone who wants to share their thoughts about the program, Save the Saviors, and why these attacks in hospitals is happening, let's start the discussion. Rajesh, if you want to say a few things based on your experience, what you have seen. Uh, yeah, uh, I will talk more when uh, this meeting is going on. Yeah. Uh, these discussions keep on happening regarding the attack on doctors day in and day out. Nowadays, they are increased more. Mm -hmm. The number is more. For any big problem, there is always a multifactorial, not a single side like doctor is not knowledgeable or uh, uh, is not dealing the patient properly. That is not the only cause, not the only. The final output will be patient attendance will become, you know, they become uh, uh, very agitated. And then the whoever the doctor is available to nearby, they will beat the doctor, not that who has done the mistake or why that happened. Most of the time this happens. Young doctors will get this punishment most of the times, young doctors, like whoever is in the DMO or this one. So the lack of yeah. preparation to, to, to face the society is the main reason, lack of preparation for the, doc, for the attack on doctors, for the increase in the attack of doctors. Preparation in the sense, upgrading their knowledge, lack of infrastructure in the government hospitals. Everyone became busy, even doctors also. They spend only little time for the patient. They have to increase the time. I observe this day in and day out. Everyone are very fast, very super speed. This is also one reason. The lack of knowledge, proper understanding of the disease, proper understanding of the patient, and uh, very, very little, uh, uh, I can say that like, uh, uh, mistakes by a doctor will happen. But all these things, these factors, if they upgrade infrastructure, knowledge, Definitely, the attacks will come down. They won't stop. Ignorance is all is already also on the side of uh, people that we cannot stop in India. Ignorance we cannot stop in India. That will be there. So you are saying Raj, that these attacks are happening. Are you saying that is it happening because the fault is on the doctor side or the hospital side? Multifactorial. Multifactorial. So there is one factor. One factor, so one factor is, is how the doctors are approaching the patients, yeah. how they are talking to them, are they spending enough time or not? Yes, that, that is there always, you know, because especially during COVID times, right? You're asked to see humongous number of patients each day. Attack occurs even in not even even before the COVID time also. That is a continuous process. Not this is not related only to the COVID time. Yeah, Dr. Tarun Chaudhary, what are your thoughts about this? How yeah, how, how much actually, do you think? Uh, good evening. Doctor's role is uh, in these attacks, and how much is uh, other factors? Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, Kiran. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be a part of the panel. Uh, I I speak, I am actually Dr. Tarun Chaudhary, ER physician working for 15 years in ER medicine, uh, worked uh, around uh, in a different uh, setup like the medical college, the private sector. So with my experience as an ER person, in ER perspective, I will uh, like to share that it is not, it is what, uh, as Dr. Rajesh said, it is multifactorial. It is not exactly the doctor or the patient or the patient's attender. It depends on the level of understanding, the communication skill, the time you spend. See, I am an ER man. I 
there is no one who comes walk into the uh, er that's very less patient is bought in a stretcher or a wheelchair patient might be responsive patient might be unresponsive he is bought by a neighbor unknown person who cannot give me any details he is bought in i am supposed to do it sometimes uh, most of the thing will uh, solve if you communicate well if you communicate yeah. well you tell the problem you attest that this patient is uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, danger chances for him to come out is very less we will try our level best as we are not mm. gods uh, and uh, one foremost thing i want to talk about here is for everybody is when a doctor speaks about finances he becomes a devil okay yeah so the financial part or whatever the other part they should be another person who's going to take care of it. the medical part yeah. of it is with doctor patient relationship is going to be maintained there and once uh, uh, you as you say that this person needs so much of uh, this thing chances for him to come out depending upon the age uh, other comorbid conditions and most of the time you, uh, you can solve all the problems uh, of uh, you know uh, making them understand making their tenders understand but there are certain helpless situations like suppose for instance a patient is unresponsive he is just pushed into the er and the attenders are outside you have no time to talk to the attenders because the patient is unresponsive and he needs immediate medical attention you may not have a group you are senior man you are trying to resuscitate the patient you do x whatever you put a central line you put a, you ventilate him he needs some drugs all resuscitation in spite of all your resuscitation efforts for that particular time you may not uh, get him out so breaking news is a very very important topic where people in neglect okay so i have to go out so i want to i want to interrupt here for one patient. second because you said yes. something very powerful i want to reiterate it for people to know it is really a key skill for all doctors and medical personnel doctor nurses or any staff is how to break an important news a difficult news in a way that the patients can understand and we can calm down their emotion otherwise they become angry and upset it it is the way of communicating that is an important point for everyone yeah, to um, hear yeah and uh, and and the thing is breaking news is a topic by itself so there's a lot of uh, research going on there a lot of uh, psychology psychologists psychologists psychiatrists everybody going through it a lot of research going on Oh. and in the crowd you, you when you are trying to break the news they might be agitated they might have been roaming around for four hours for five hospitals they say that we can't do anything so he's he's just come in the last part uh, thinking that there's some justice is going to happen and you say uh, whatever uh, the news you have to break you have to take time and the way you say plays a lot the second part of the issue is you have did certain resuscitation okay you have intubated the patient you have used a, a iv line or iv fluid whatever drugs so the next part is you are going to show the bill okay mm. that is where the stimulation starts yeah okay patient is no more you have got into the hospital within 20 minutes you are giving me a big bill whatever bill it is okay so this is not acceptable that's what so nowadays actually it is very difficult to explain but who are who is going to pay for all this So if it's a corporate setup if it's, it's a government hospital now they are now we have working on we have worked on all these things due to our past experiences the hospital is put some amount all these same uh, kind of your voice is because, uh, it's doctor. an added support to the family we cannot uh, uh, you know burden them in spite of here now is it clear now yeah now we can hear you yeah yeah ah uh, so uh, the it 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 is actually multifactorial and the second part is the other part who is on the other side people who already like say they are coming into a corporate hospital okay thinking that these corporate hospitals charge a huge money they start uh, putting a battery of investigations and that is a psychological prefixed idea they want the best invest best treatment from a very good doctor with no cost that is the basic attitude of a person now who is coming out because it's going to pitch the pocket you have come to an uh, corporate setup where 
things are happening but you don't want to pay anything okay so that is a very difficult scenario from the uh, if, from that prefixed mind suppose say a young man who has come with chest pain he has come to er he is diagnosed to have an mi okay med- uh, myocardial infarction and he is supposed to be taken to the cath lab for immediate cath how are you going to address the person he has got an early uh, uh, prefix idea that this hospital is going to uh, uh, charge me more so you are you are you are supposed to say that this cath procedure is going to cost x number of rupees so he is not a, he is not willing these guys are all false that's how the thing starts so uh, out of experience we we try to say that can i speak to your personal uh, family doctor or your doctor friend or a doctor uh, a family who, a relative who is a doctor so we try to explain the situation that this is man is need he needs he's got an mi he needs he is in the window period and it is it saves his life okay yeah so there's such a lot of uh, uh, you know back uh, uh, the hard work which we have to take there are not that is not only the patient there are oh. x number of patients in the room which i have to keep convincing them some people irritate me all the doctors i say and then some people i have the next moment the next bed is in pain i have to talk to him very politely it's okay there's no point there's no don't worry i've given an injection it will calm down so that is the situation okay so out of experience we try our level best to, to see what best for the patient uh yeah that is that is the main factor see once out of, uh, what we see is a prefix idea that the yeah. people are having uh. okay uh and this uh what uh, we say is uh this should go out whether it is the prefix idea has to be education fixed. where <laughs> uh has to be, because they don't want the, the opposite is a government hospital they don't want to go to the government hospital they want government the best hospital. treatment with uh, uh, minimum uh, this thing you cannot do anything and they don't believe you trust trust, trust. is one factor they come yeah. for you they trust you they, they they just come to the hospital say that uh, you have and you say that he needs these guys are charging what is this uh, so much of uh, money uh, they are doing they are just trying to cheat us and the problem mm-hmm. here is time he is not an op yeah. patient he is an mi patient if right. you don't have time to go convince him to say go to the other hospital to get and get a uh, this thing from the doctor's yeah. point okay yeah. so it's very yeah. tough to convince them yeah very good you shared a lot of good points uh, dr tarun especially for people who do not know what is er it is the emergency room um ed is emergency department so when people first come to the hospital uh with some kind of emergency like a heart attack stroke accident they go to the emergency room or casualty we also call it um and then there there are a set of doctors who help them who are the emergency room physicians and then they triage and say hey how this guy is doing and then if they need a heart attack they send it to cardiologist to do angiogram if they have a stroke they call a neurologist to take care of the stroke or sometimes if there is a surgery that is needed they'll get the surgeon involved there is an emergency medicine that is what they do and what happens is the emergency doctor there is a lot of pressure on us because so many patients coming in and they had to figure out very quickly what needs to be done it's not always whether you have spent half an hour two hours with the patient sometimes the two minutes of the doctor's time is very very important to figure out what is happening right dr tarun and i can definitely yes, say yes. with experience myself and many other doctors here with experience when i started medical college i used to spend almost one hour with each patient to understand what is going on because my knowledge was not so great now i walk into the room and within 2 minutes i know what is happening with most patients because you accumulated knowledge experience and clinical judgment wisdom about the patient situation so people i think patients need to understand that just because a doctor spent only 2 minutes it doesn't mean he is a bad doctor <laughs> as long as they are giving the right treatment now uh, that i'm not saying that we should not spend more time with patients i think we should always do 
try to do spend as much as we can. But as you know, in India, the patient to doctor ratio is really bad. We have so many patients for each doctor compared to developed countries. Even in developed countries, it is on the lower side. So the doctor has no other choice. If he has 100 patients to see, he can only spend so much time on each patient. So yeah. it's Man. people need to understand this point. I'm not saying that we should shun ourselves from spending more time, but it, th these are the factors that one need to understand. Yes, Rajesh, you have something you want to say? Yeah, yeah. Many hospitals, many emergency departments, lacks of emergencies per day, but attacks occur very rare. Okay, just to take it as a percentage, attack on emergency doctors, particularly in casualty, has increased this pandemic period because cases to emergency load is more than what a doctor can see. So they come and they tell that nobody has uh, uh, reached us or shown us for the last one hour, two hours. Uh, that is not the doctor mistake. Most of the attacks pre-COVID area or pre-pandemic time is in the admitted wards, admitted wards with a history of patient admission or they claim that wrong surgery is done or proper care is not taken or they charge more the hospitals are attacked most of the times based on this thing. Hospital, not the doctor, even hospitals are attacked. You can see a number of videos. Most of the times, attacks will be by the admitted patient who is inside the ward. Or during this pandemic period, like attack on ER doctors also has increased a lot. Increased a lot. That's one thing. The basic or the most important thing to get out of this admitted uh, attack on doctor uh, attack on doctors by a patient who got already admitted that everything should be taken care by a the primary consultant if he is more you know, knowledgeable about how to deal a patient in all the aspects treatment financial counseling everything because once he is admitted a sick patient will be seen by multiple consultants then critical care people Financial aspect will be more, but the counseling should be done through a one person after discussing the all these things. Most of the attacks are the calls, uh, thing goes to the attenders by counseling by multiple people. Someone comes who don't There's see the, some kind of yeah. Uh, specialist come who don't see the patient for the last ten days. He will see for is needed only for that day, and then he will come and he counsel whatever he want, and if we go. Everything will be spoiled. Everything will be spoiled. So the primary consultant with a good knowledge of everything, each aspect of the, all the aspect of patient, all the aspect, like a financial <laughs> aspect, counseling aspect, then grip over the other systems. These things will definitely decrease. Two days back only we faced the very dangerous case. Very dangerous. We have- Yeah, to, Rajesh, I would like you to share the dangerous case uh, in a few minutes, but I want to say something. And then I want to uh, give the mic to Dr. Batalwar to yeah. give his perspective also, and then we'll come back to the dangerous patient. Yeah. What I want to say is, it is true that attacks are not just on the emergency room, but actually it happens once they actually get inside the hospital because the emergency room contact is typically less, sure. maybe hour, two hours, maybe five hours, six hours. But once they get in the hospital, and uh, they heard something in the emergency room and the doctor upstairs, um, they may have a different perspective or the situation might have changed. So they may have to change the plan, right? And then there is a consultant who comes in and then he may actually have a different perspective about the same thing. Then what I see is there is a communication gap that is created in this entire process and that communication gap makes it difficult for patients to understand what the hell is going on. They just don't understand. <laughs> so that communication gap is what Rajesh is highlighting. And uh, that needs to be clarified. I got your point, Rajesh. And uh, we'll go deeper into the topic, how to fix it. But I want to say something very important. No matter how the problem arise, you know, whether it is communication gap, whether it is financial, whether it is an infrastructure problem, no matter what the reason is, it is 
we need to absolutely it is not acceptable for anyone to attack another human being whether it is a doctor whether it is a nurse or whether it is someone else you know that i think that attitude needs to be inculcated need to be inculcated in everyone in the society okay without any doubt uh we need to make this point very clear let us say if someone is walking on the street and the policeman stopped him and asked for something are you going to attack the policeman that doesn't happen too often compared to doctors yes they have other different problems police people why because doctors or the hospital are they soft targets right so the, there is a law that tells that people need to be you know punished imprisoned if there are attacks on doctors so i i just want to make that point it, it is just not acceptable no matter what the reason is to attack doctors or hospitals it needs to be resolved in a more peaceful way whatever it is but i know the other side of the coin too when you try to resolve these things in our indian society where the legal system takes years and years to get anything done there is a lot of frustration there sir so dr batal were please uh, share your perspective on what's happening what we have been discussing what what, what do you think about all this yeah good evening all the panelists good evening all the audience am i hearable yes yes sir yeah so the solution to this problem is lying with quality council of india national accreditation board of healthcare facility and in india the hospitals particularly corporate hospitals big charitable trust hospitals tertiary healthcare facilities they are going for nabh accreditation and under nabh accreditation all policy procedures sops are let down where in such cases different types of codes are there like code blue if the patient is unresponsive does not respond if there is a such type of situation any attack or any misbehavior with the doctor with any of the nursing staff with any of the healthcare workers then we activate code gray and the systems are in place we find out the reason and all the team members of code gray they assemble they calm down the mob over there they go they communicate to them and the reason for code gray is disclosed to all the team members through audio system through whatsapp message and through telephonic message so that they will know understand what is going on and such people are calm down particularly in nabh accredited hospitals nowadays what happen in gujarat government of gujarat they are having so many government hospitals throughout gujarat so they have started with tertiary healthcare facility secondary healthcare facility and they are going for nabh accreditation so that all the systems everything all sops are laid down as per the nabh standards and everything all types of consents they are in hindi english and the regional language like in andhra it will be in telugu like in gujarat it will be in gujarati like in maharashtra it will be in marathi so that for each and every procedure any invasive procedure which you are carrying out on the patient the next of kin the next blood relation available over there he reads the consent he understands the consent and he signs it and gives the permission to go ahead that is one thing another thing all the counselings 
by the consultant is video recorded in the counseling room. So you have sufficient evidences in case there is such type of mishaps occurring in any of the hospital or if there is a case in the court, suppose there is an attack on any doctor, to prove in the court of law, we need to carry out, collect all evidences of audio recording, video recording, as well as eyewitnesses, so that there will be a fear in the society that it is not easy because generally what happens, the attacks happens when there is a crowd. So if your security system in the hospital is tightened very well along with the patient, only one attendant is allowed who can accompany the patient 24 by 7 during COVID time we are taking all the relatives, all the attendant with the patient with RT-PCR test and they are not allowed to go out of the hospital. They have to be there with the patient. We define their roles and responsibility. What are their roles and responsibility? Suppose the patient is in ICU. There's a separate arrangement for sleeping the patient relative who is accompanying the patient who is admitted in intensive care unit or intensive care cardiac unit or intensive care surgical unit. All these patients relatives, they are always available around the clock. And for each and every procedure, we inform them, we communicate them. There is a separate communication sheet on which the consultant or the treating doctor writes what communication has been given to that particular relative who is attending the patient and his signature is also taken. So all such types of evidences are collected and particularly in corporate big hospitals, the literate patients, they are coming. They are not illiterate. If you communicate to them properly, because in medical curriculum, there is no teaching about how to communicate to a patient. Communication is learned by the doctors by trial and error method through practice. All the doctors, they are not same. Every mentality of every doctor is different. It depends on how many patients he or, he or she is attending per day in OPD, how many patients he or she is attending in wards, how many patients they are attending in ICU. In country like India, where there is shortage of doctors, the consultant who is sitting in USA or UK sees limited number of patients, either 10 or 15 patients. That's how the patients from other countries, they are coming for medical tourism to India because there is a waiting list. There is a strict appointment. Whereas in India, there is no such strictness of the appointment. You can walk in the hospital. If there is a big queue, people are standing for their number. But if a VIP patient comes, he's an MLA, he's a corporator, he brings along with his, him 10 people and manage to get inside. They don't follow the queue. They will give the information to the doctor that corporator Saab I hai, or MLA has come or member of parliament has come. So, due respect they want. They want that they should be given a red carpet welcome in the hospital for their treatment. On the contrary, they want everything that they are the public representative 
and they should not be charged. Whereas it has to be made clear to all the politicians because all the hospitals, they are surrounded by the pockets of different politicians of different parties. And they have their local stand over there. They bring their people whenever they come or they send any patient there are 10 people along with the patient. And their motto is that they are in your vicinity. They are making favor to you. They are spreading good name of your hospital that you are doing so much charity, in particularly in charitable trust hospital. And they want to take the credit of it. Hospital is spending lakhs and lakhs of rupees on the surgeries in charitable hospital, where 2% 2 of the total revenue generated is given to the charity by the charitable trust hospitals, where indigent patient, those who are treated 100% free of cost, then there is a separate, like after indigent, there's a weaker section patient. They are treated at 50% cost. But suppose there's a paralysis patient coming and the patient he is admitted in a weaker section class. The patient, after keeping the patient in ICU for a long time, the bill rises daily because daily cost of ICU for each patient is, in, is more than 30 to 40,000 per day. And it goes on multiplying months together and the patient is not recovered. Many times it happens that due to hypoxic brain damage, yeah. there is a case lying in the bed and the patient's relatives after, after communicating them, the prognosis of the patient, they are not ready to take the patient to home. Neither they want to spend money on that particular patient. Under such, such circumstances, neither hospital is getting revenue, the bed is occupied, and there is a political pressure that you cannot discharge that patient unless the patient walks from the hospital. Patient has come to the hospital walking, he should go walking at home. That does not happen in such cases of hypoxic brain damage right such patients I, I want to make a point yeah. here sir you, yeah. you 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 said something very powerful uh, there is an expectation yeah. in patients or families that because i have spent so much money when i leave the hospital <laughs> i should go home completely healthy while there is a reasonable expectation in most cases but there are some cases where i mean you just can't reverse whatever that happened. For example, a stroke. For example, hypoxic brain damage or something else. <clears throat> even in so, COVID, COVID lung damage. Even COVID lung damage. It may yeah, take months before they recover. Yeah, we have sent so many cases. Yeah. We have sent so many cases to Chennai for lung transplant because oh. lung transplant is not happening in Bombay. Oh. We get the cadaver lung. Oh. How long we will keep the patient on ICMO. Yeah. We are keeping the patient on ICMO for months together, waiting for the lung from the donor. Yeah. But if there is no cadaver available, no cadaver donation happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that I think everyone watching this, what you guys need to realize is uh, our any healthcare system, not just Indian healthcare system, and the decisions that have to be made in a system, healthcare system, they're very complex. It is not one problem, one solution in the straight line. There are so many factors that are involved in every single decision that is being made. And it is very hard to understand, very, very, very hard to understand, uh, even for experienced doctors sometimes. So I cannot expect patients and families, no matter how well educated they are, they could have an MBA, they could be an engineer, they could be a politician, whatever it is, 
to actually understand the complexities of the healthcare system. Only people who are going through that complexity in the healthcare system see what is actually happening every moment. Now, what I do say, what I would say though is that through these discussions like this, there is a need to raise the awareness about the problems we face as doctors every single day in rendering care because the patient and family and the community perception is that, oh, they only saw for five minutes. Oh, they are giving me a uh, 10 lakhs um, uh, bill. Oh, why is this costing so much? So there is a huge gap between the medical community and the public in how things are done in how things are done. And there is a huge trust issue over the past 10, 15, 20 years as there is more corporate culture um, you know, that we have developed. There is this idea that, oh, corporate hospitals are charging a lot. So there is, uh, and that needs to be bridged. The trust, the communication needs to be bridged. And I want to take a minute here to let actually Subhakar, who works at a corporate hospital, to say a few words about it. Yeah, Subhakar. Good evening, everyone. Sir, Kiran, sir, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Actually, yeah. even last week also, I connected to this talk. So I felt that very happy. In last week, sir, you mainly stressed about a point, understanding. So this is the main factor for, I think, discussion of these uh, sessions, sir. Uh, now, uh, two doctors spoke about their issues. And because I'm working in a corporate hospital, and my entire experience is only in corporate setup. So I am interacted with doctors, patients, as well as management. So now I am advocating uh, on behalf of patients, sir. Yeah, uh, uh, Subhak, <laughs> yeah. for everyone to know, please let them know your role in the hospital so that they know yeah. the point. I'm working in Apollo Hospitals, Hyderabad, Jubilee Hills as a uh, information management uh, deputy general manager. So I do interact with patients in the information department. And this is a different ex uh, experience, actually. Our talk itself, talk itself is a double-edged source. We cannot say that doctor had a, made a mistake or we cannot say that patient attendants did, did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is a double-edged sword. Both sides, there will be some plus and minus. And now I'm mm, giving my opinion on behalf of the patient. Yeah. Normally in Indian scenario, sir, we, we all know that the spending of healthcare infrastructure is very minimal. So keeping this in mind, there is no facilities in government setup. You take either medical colleges or medical um, district hospitals or area hospital, anything. If it is required in a specialized care means, everyone thinks that only corporate hospital is the immediate solution. So from the villages, from the cities, from the um, metropolitan cities, people first will think about uh, a health means it is a corporate hospital mainly. And in that corporate hospital also, people are thinking for the specialized doctors. Mm. So normally, the, if fever comes, normally the patient, uh, earlier days patient goes to a general physician. After that assessment will be done. If required, the patient will be referred to the specialist. Mm. But nowadays what happened with the help of Google knowledge, Right, whatever symptoms are they are having. Dr. Google. Dr. Yeah, Google. Google. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With the Google knowledge, just they are typing in the Google and taking some decision and rushing to the hospital. And nowadays, sir, even the patients also searching for the reviews of a particular doctor. Hmm. Based yeah. on reviews, they are visiting to the hospitals and they are taking consultation from the doctor. So now we are in that era with that attitude or with the thinking pattern, this profession, especially the hospital or doctor treatment, it became a consumer activity. Yeah. 
instead of a restoring health or uh, taking the treatment or bettering um, better condition from the existing disease to the next level it becomes a consumer mentality to the right. customer so when i am paying a 1 lakh rupee to the hospital i need to get the sophisticated treatment yeah i am giving you 1 lakh you better bring me alive no matter what my situation is yeah. that's the that is the yeah. set <laughs> mindset yeah. one, people are coming. one thing i just want to tell you here yes yeah excuse me one thing i just want to tell you here is uh, that's what actually is mentioned like uh, uh, it is like uh, the amount i pay what i get back that is what the people are actually you know what uh, misinterpretation like whatever misconception they have is like when you go to a five star hotel you pay a huge amount of bill you are prepared for that you wait for for hours together you come you give them tips you say that i have breakfast and so on so whole hospital life your life is is put into so uh, back position that you start counting every damn thing for your life you start saying that what is this what is that you go to a five star hotel would you play you go to a movie theater you wait for 3 hours to buy a ticket in a reserved class buy a popcorn for a uh, uh, the uh, extra price that's what happens because it it is the perception of the person how much value he is giving to his own life yeah that's Actually, what happens yeah this is what we are stressing again and again sir mm. it is a perception understanding mm. about the medical condition of the patient so as a patient attendant the main reasons what normally patient or patient attendants would experience is the lack of communication yeah, as dr tarun choudhury sir pointed out so uh, if you sir you also also mentioned that normally the first attempt or attack will be done to the junior level doctors right right very usually true, research that shows true. that junior level doctors are more susceptible to attacks than senior level doctors that means dr batalwar will have a far less chance for anyone to attack him <laughs> yeah. but someone like a, who just uh, came out of <laughs> uh, you know uh, medical college they are at a much higher risk you know i think the patients have this perception the same thing with dr tarun choudhury or rajesh yes sir uh, very true sir very true because And they see in this uh, in this process also sir what they are doing yeah in this process also there is a lack of communication particularly related to the l- local language mm. see since i am working in a corporate hospital right i have a lot of people from the different states and different um, own languages mm. when it comes to as dr tarun choudhury sir told about the er scenario emergency room right. scenario right their explanation or explaining about the patient condition plan of care and further course and what will be done to the patient what can be done what is the outcome of the patient explaining in a detailed way and proper way is the the method of communication sir right that may be the one of the reason yeah and other thing is as butwar sir told vip syndrome yeah <laughs> especially in our corporate scenario yeah sir if you see the same again either icu or er there are 10 patients already occupied on beds and one oh. vip suddenly enters into the either icu or er so there will be mess in that place sir. so there oh. is a some different attention as butwar sir told that there is a red carpet to that vip obviously or automatically i will compare my care with that patient yeah so when it the comparison comes into my mind automatically again the consumer mindset comes i am also paying the same amount to the this particular care icu care icu room charge and i am not getting that much of preference Attention. yeah this is the one of the reason hmm. and other thing sir and lack of trust on doctors and the important important to aspect is sir now now nowadays we are all practicing multidisciplinary setups yeah so here the communication barrier especially i am talking about communication barrier sir suppose mm. 
Tarun Chaudhary sir admitted a patient. Under him, he is the primary consultant. He gave referral to the neurologist, nephrologist, or whoever is required in that particular scenario. Yeah. So when communicating to the either patient or patient attendant, hmm. there is no in gathering of information from the different doctors, whoever is participating in the particular <clears throat> patient care, and not giving the proper information to the patient, sir. I have a point here. I want to make. Yes, sir. Yes. There is a common theme that is happening here. I want everyone to notice that is communication, whether it is doctor to patient or patient to doctor, whether it is doctor to consultant, other consultants, uh, specialists, whoever it is, and closing the loop of communication with the patient. You know, communication is one key thing in my opinion uh, is responsible for. Uh, the misunderstandings which can lead to attacks. And I would like to make another point here that is communication doesn't necessarily mean that you have to talk to them for 30 minutes. There are ways that we all can learn about communication as uh, doctors or nurses or the staff. In two minutes, how can you communicate properly what you need to say and be done with it and tell them, you know what, I have an emergency, I have to go, but I want to stop here for one second and tell you, I call the cardiologist and they're going to take care of you. This is what I think. If you have more questions, we'll talk a little later. That itself, but a lot of time what happens is for patients, because we are busy, right, doctors, we are running and doing this and doing that. And even though we want to, for some reason, the things that we want to communicate never gets communicated. So Batal, Dr. Batal, you want to say something? Please go ahead, yeah. Yeah, okay. apart from the communication, Rajesh, yeah. After Dr. Batal, one yeah. minute. There is a small saying we used to like uh, tell all the people to decrease this uh, problem. There are four things. One is communication. Second is documentation. Yes. And documentation of what you communicated and communication of documented. <laughs> yes, true. Yeah, yes. that is what we do in America. To everyone. <laughs> now there is so much documentation that we don't have time for communication. Yeah. But anyway, that's a <laughs> different problem. And the yeah. second thing is, second thing is, is all communication. Everything uh, 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 generally happens in a nice way. Only one thing: spend the time with patient to understand the disease. Spend the time with patient to understand the disease, and spend equally time to the patient attendant. To understand what is happening, yeah. most of the problems will solve. Okay. Most of the problems. most of the problems will solve. For and that, one point, uh, one, one point uh, communication counseling should be there. One point that is the primary consultant is the proper person to come counsel the patient, patient attendants. You know, the, the, I agree. You know, we are talking about an idealistic situation here, Rajesh. The reason is these things do not even happen in America. I see every day, so. In India, for that, what all the things that you are saying that needs to happen, for that, the amount of time and energy and effort that is needed, uh, probably Indian doctors can see more than 15 to 20 patients a day. And for that, the government or whoever it is needs to compensate for the income loss that you're not seeing so many patients. And even it is not about income loss. It's about the fact that you don't, people, people won't be seen. Because we have so many patients and so less doctors. Sir, but please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Another factor is transparency from the hospital side. Hospital yeah. has to be totally transparent. There should not be any hidden things. Yeah. But if you have your tariff list, tariff list for everything, oh. your room rent, your bed charges, your operation theater charges, your consulting charges, various procedure charges, various packages, if everything is transparent, particularly cost-wise. Yeah. Because cost is a big factor in Indian scenario. A middle income group person who is going to a corporate hospital because in all metro cities, all small nursing homes, they are on the verge of closure. Many of them have been closed because the patient wants all facility under one umbrella. And under one umbrella, they want blood bank, 
they want pathology, they want CT, they want MRI, they want cath lab, all facilities under one roof. And these types of setups are only available with big corporate or big charitable trust hospitals. But if they are putting everything on their website, if they are displaying the digital display in the reception area of the hospital, where all the details are just rolling on the screen and it is in the local language, it, it is in the English, it is in the Hindi, whatever the language the local people understand in all those languages. Yeah. What are the rules and regulations of the hospital? Hmm. What is the responsibility of the patient? What is the responsibility of the doctor? Everything is displayed. And it, they go on reading it during waiting for day. All the patients, patients' relatives, they come to know. Suppose they are coming into a particular corporate hospital. Every hospital, they have their own policies. They have their own set of rules and regulations for the patient as well as their relatives. Suppose a hospital who is giving credit limit to a patient up to 50,000 rupees. If after 50,000, the bill increases, automatic through computer system, SMS goes on next of kin of the patient that so much amount is required to be paid. Subsequently, yeah. if they don't pay, next time the, there will be a WhatsApp message in a letterhead format of that hospital signed by the medical superintendent and it goes to the WhatsApp of the next of king. Then he comes running because we that whatever the bill amount per day is generated, 50% of that bill amount is due to the drugs consumed by your patient and hospitals. They are not manufacturing the medicine. We are procuring the medicine for your patient from the market. We are not the pharma company. We have to procure the consumables. We have to procure the medicine from the market. If you don't pay, how we are going to take care of 300, 500 patients who are admitted yeah. in the hospital? So yeah. we need to make everything transparent apart from communication. One yeah. sad thing is that in Indian scenario, when there is an emergency room, the, there are no ER, uh, emergency room specialists available in India. So many of the time, plain MBBS graduates who are not going for their PG, who are not going for NEET exam, they are cashed, they are put, dumped in casualty to take care of casualty round the clock. Because all senior consultant, all postgraduate or DM or MCH qualified doctors, they don't come during night. During yeah. night, your DNB resident, your MD, MS residents, they are seeing the patient during odd hours. Yes. On Saturday, Sunday, all these senior consultants, they are not available because they are going for a picnic with their family. So yeah. patient care is taken over by the junior, those who are learning. They are either DNB residents or they are MDMS, PG students who are staying in the hostel, doing yeah. the clock duties, and they are doing so much duty, they are tired because they are staying in the hospital premises. And yeah. all these PGs, they are supposed to work 24 by seven, they don't have any restriction of working hours. I have an important point here. You made a lot of good points, sir. Transparency yeah. is definitely one of the most important things. Communication, transparency, because people need to know, hey, if you are charging so much, it is because uh, the uh, pharmacology, the, the medications that we are getting from the drug company, it is char they are charging so much. That's the reason we have to do this. Or whatever it is, the equipment costs so much. I think this kind of breakdown for people to understand, I think is going to be helpful. And uh, we'll get back to that point. But 
Also, there is another very important point that you made, which is the junior doctors uh, being the front line in the casualties and emergency rooms. I will ask Dr. Tarun Chaudhary to comment on it in a second. Um, but apart from that, there's another thing, this physician burnout. Physician burnout. And I'm not, you know, I'm not just talking about the junior doctors, it is the senior doctors at all levels because there is so much pressure, there is so much work and it's an imperfect system. And uh, despite all your efforts to do help people, sometimes you are perceived in a very negative way by the patients or the attendants. Um, and after years and years of struggle, one has to, to become a doctor, right? MBBS, five and a half years, post-graduation, three years, if you're doing DM, you know, is another two or three years. And then in between many other things, I mean, to become a doctor, it takes at least 10 years of your life is gone just for studies. <laughs> so, and doctors feel very frustrated because after all this, I mean, is this how people are going to treat me? And I am helping every single day. I'm putting my life at risk to help other people, especially during this COVID scenario. So doctors are feeling the burnout. And when doctors or nurses or the staff is burnt out, then they are under a lot of stress. There is a greater chance to make mistakes. And that is going to be detrimental for patients. In America, there is research that says that medical errors are the third leading cause of death right after heart disease and cancer. Right after heart disease and cancer. I mean, that's huge. That's huge. So uh, I, I, we also need to address the physician burnout aspect, how to help physicians not to be burned out, how to be calm, how to be peaceful, um, how to handle stressful situations in a graceful way, all these things. We'll, so we'll, we'll get to that a little later. I will let, let Dr. Tarun Chaudhary, and then the mic goes to Subhakar because I interrupted you about the points that you're making. So Dr. Tarun Chaudhary, please uh, tell us about these emergency physicians. Yeah, How actually it... see, uh, uh, emergency uh, medicine is new to India. New to India, I mean to say that I am one among the first emergency physicians in India. Yeah. We had a lot of struggle. We didn't know it. to change the name from casualty to ER. Concepts of ER was very difficult. Yeah. A consultant says that, uh, see, why did you treat this case like this? You would have, uh, we would have done better if you would have done like this. So we had to uh, coordinate. We have to make a drug committee. We had to do a protocol-based uh, uh, approach. Then we had to study and the course the curriculum everything because it's all westernized by the time it came to India and even still now the government uh, uh, government is still not recognized emergency medicine in a big way uh, recently uh, they have started the, uh, it's a must for all the uh, people to uh, for all the medical colleges to have emergency rooms uh, so the things are just developing there are uh, acute shortage of emergency physicians throughout India throughout India and uh, in spite uh, the outcome of these uh, ER uh, medicine people is very, very minimal compared to the requirement. So uh, until and unless there is a lot of support from the medical council, the medical colleges, the system, education policies, all that have to change. And uh, 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 it's been improving. We have been doing a lot. We have been improving. We have... Uh, uh, now, uh, things are much better in the ER, with the ER physician and all the equipment, uh, the protocols, everything has been there. But still, there's a lot of care to go. There's a lot of uh, uh, things required. Um, so, the number has to increase very very big. Your, your voice is uh, so, not audible. Yeah, now... Hello. Uh, I'm sorry. I can get you. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, actually, uh, that's what I was talking about. Uh, people uh, like the deficiency of the ER physicians here. Yeah. The concepts have changed. Acceptance is now more better. 
and uh, people are more confident saying that uh, there's an er there er position there so you can go any point of time uh, things are happening very fast things will uh, uh, take a good uh, this thing if this particular uh, team is there this particular er room is uh, present so uh, it, 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 it's growing it will definitely grow we'll try to do our best hope the government and all the other people also support us to improve the er medicine uh, teaching programs curriculum and all the facilities which is basically required there is an important point here that i want to mention about the er program uh, like dr tarancha they said this is a relatively new uh, training program in india that's a big issue by itself big issue by itself like uh, dr batar was said like i used to work in the casualty back 15 years ago when i was fresh graduate from mbbs you know and unfortunately when you just come out of mbbs your knowledge is still limited yes you have become a doctor you have learned a lot of things definitely theoretically i'm sure you know a lot but you still don't have the same experience as you know a doctor who has done this for 5 years 10 years and uh, in india i did see this tendency where the specialists may not be available uh on the weekends to actually guide especially during nights that is a problem so if you look at all these different points right it is largely an infrastructure problem training issue a government issue because a lot of these things depends on government policies isn't it how they are doing things whether they are giving uh, enough support for medical community to do get the training right and providing the facilities for doctors to get trained in whatever that is needed and are doctors getting compensated properly so that they can provide what they need to i mean there are so many issues behind the scenes that the patients the families the public need to understand i don't i'm not in the delusion that we can solve this problem in one uh, session like this but every week or two things like this happening will let people start thinking about it oh they have this problem yes they do not maybe have a solution but they have this problem so anyway um i would yeah i would let dr batal say something and then go to subakar yeah yes sir yeah. due to covid pandemic yeah. it has attracted the concentration of the doctors it has attracted the concentration of the government it has concentrated the attracted the state government so all the government funding due to covid mm. now diverted to healthcare system mm. healthcare systems they are building up in various state where there is more patients of covid like in there was a shortage of oxygen during the second wave of the covid and we have seen that how the oxygen plants were created within 15 days of time by the government it is a big plan which can cater to 1000 bedded hospital of the patients those who require oxygen therapy due to covid so now government has taken a lot of efforts yeah particularly due to covid and now the amount of gdp which is given for health care sector this time is more three fold more than the earlier years and mm. of funding is coming from international agencies also for the health care and it is i opener this pandemic is an i opener to all the leaders to all the political parties to government to public representatives mlas mps corporators everyone so now there is good attention of all these politicians 
to bring these changes hmm government setups yeah from primary health centers starting from rural hospitals because the covid has spread to the rural area same in the urban area same in the metro cities even today the local trains in mumbai they are not running and only the local train is running for the healthcare workers mm. doctors so mm. they will come for their duty through local trains because local train in mumbai is called as lifeline of mumbai yes yeah lo- if the local train stops it means bombay is not working yeah that is the scenario so yeah. how the government the railways railways have designed the bogies which oh. have gone to the rural areas where there are no hospitals and mm. these bogies isolation wards mm. produced inside the bogi patients were admitted and the railway doctors they treated these patients inside the railway coach which mm. is cut into isolation wards so these things has this change is a dramatic change in the indian scenario yeah. and has been taught by the covid covid 19 and now as the virus is mutating now we are preparing for third wave also and huge amount is spent to create the facilities ha huh. during second wave government have not predicted that after finishing first wave second wave will come so immediately and they were not able to cope up with the second yeah. so for third wave they have predicted that it will be having focus on the pediatric age group so yeah. of good pediatric hospitals are coming up yeah with all pediatric facilities pics nicus especially for the pregnant women vulnerable age group so now various section of the society they are giving importance for their healthcare system and this is a good thing that the pandemic has taught to the government to prepare themselves for such type of emergencies awesome awesome i'm very happy to um hear such a great response from the government in mumbai maharashtra and i hope everyone does the same and learn from them um i will let uh, people in andhra pradesh comment on it but uh, subhakar back to you you made three points before understanding communication and there are other points that yeah you want to make please go ahead yeah as uh, dr batu arsa told there is a lot of improvements sir after this covid pandemic mm-hmm. uh, there is a spending of uh, um, budgets or healthcare infrastructure is definitely increasing but here we are discussing about the violence against doctors yeah so this violence uh one of the another reason sir in between actually i'm sorry again i'm bringing the same thing into discussion yeah. i stopped yeah. my valid point one of the valid point yeah that is for uh, medical fraternity especially the treating doctors mainly mm. focusing on the clinical aspects which is related to the disease but here sir if you if you observe there are many people involved connected with the patient that is patient attendant family members and there are a lot of people so yeah. there is a gap again communication gap so mm. clinicians are focusing only on clinical aspects yeah but my point is here clinician also has to understand the emotional aspects of the can hear you subhaga you are going in and out now is it okay sir? yeah 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 my point is the treating doctor or clinician has to understand Yeah. not only the um, disease pattern and also the emotional and uh, psychological issues of the patient as well as the family members so yeah. that is the one area 
causing the violation yeah so what do you say doctor your voice is going in and out if you think that i don't know is it same with everyone else i can't hear subhakar can everyone no. hear subhakar yes yes we are hearing yeah one thing i want to say because what sudhakar has told that there has to be some psychological aspect some emotional aspect of the patient and their relative but yeah. yet, sudhakar everywhere we are practicing the medicine which is like uh, diagnosing the patient with various modalities of the diagnostic test so it is the type of medicine which we are practicing is evidence based medicine correct sir using the disease, we are giving a list of diagnostic tests to the patient once the test reports comes the doctor sees all the reports and the diagnosis is declared it is communicated to the patient patient's family but subsequently if the prognosis of that disease or that diagnosis is convinced to the patient and his family then there is no much problem of such attacks on the doctor so we are not focusing on the prognosis of that particular disease which is causing harm to the patient which the doctor is treating but sometimes there are chances that the line of treatment given by the doctor fails particularly in cancer patient you know that the cancer patient is taking chemotherapy taking radiotherapy undergone several times surgeries but the prognosis if it is a young patient the the prognosis has to be told clear cut to the family that if you try even we have seen the chief minister level people who is treated in our hospital went to usa taken treatment over there came back to india after few months he expired we have given that prognosis before going him to usa hello this is the prognosis of your disease so the prognosis has to be clearly declared and to be understood by the family thank you yes yeah, sir it all again coming back to communication even subha subhakar what you're saying is understanding and communication yes the doctor playing a role not just as a doctor giving the diagnosis and treatment but playing the role as a compassionate being and communicate that compassion correct to the patient a lot of doctors are compassionate that's the reason they are in this profession <laughs> but that compassion may not always be communicated to the patients and also patients sometimes are in severe pain because of the disease emotional pain and that needs to be understood and for that again it comes back to time crunch whether you have time to do that or not um yeah is there any other point that you want to make subhakar yeah another thing is uh, education i am talking about so oh. the uh, as we all know there are many hospitals going for uh, accreditation so all accreditation bodies talks about education patient and family education so here the only one thing what we observed is we educate the patient but it is a normal education and the regular regular education what the doctors and nurses what they are give as a medical record health information manager i see records so all those records records documented the fall risk assessment educated or hand hygiene educated or something educated it is not relevant may not be relevant to the patient condition here the education even the accreditation bodies also expect that there should be a disease specific education mm. this is the point there are 
some cases missing uh, education to the family members as well as to the patient so this 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 is the one uh, lacking in the hospitals from the doctor side as well as the other uh, healthcare provider side so that there is a anxiety or there is a uh, raise of hands or abuse words these are things are happening yeah so there is another huge point that you made education um i think the answer to almost every single problem in life is education <laughs> <laughs> almost every single problem in life is education proper education uh unfortunately that doesn't happen so how do we pro- solve the problem of education is going to be important um to patients my suggestion to the patients is yes i mean google is not the best way <laughs> to learn about <laughs> uh the physician medicine. is the best way sir ha huh? physician is the best way physician is the best way yes, so I, i want to mention this um approximately two and a half months ago when i saw all these things happening in india i have started personally a new initiative i actually started a youtube channel for health education for patients correct it is called dr kam sanjeevini channel the entire goal of this channel is to provide evidence based right information for patients now patients what they need to do is yes we can provide the information but they need to watch it learn it and ask questions so i think that is a continuous process it is not about one day it is not about one week it is not about one month because um like in ancient chinese medicine what they say is the doctor is given incentive when the patient doesn't come to the hospital when the patient comes to the hospital they get deincentivized <laughs> you know that means health is given a greater focus than illness and prevention is given a greater focus than treatment as a society as a country as a healthcare system i think we all need to go in that direction and immediately there will be a question oh then all the hospitals and doctors will go out of business no that is not going to happen because human behavior is hard to change is very hard to change but even if there is a little bit of this effort you know from the community from the doctors from the government to educate people about various diseases that is going to reduce the unnecessary burden A lot of times people come with silly complaints which unnecessarily takes away the doctor's time right unnecessarily the patient has to spend their money right these things will automatically be taken care of so doctors can focus on the real important things that they can treat that reduce the burden on the system so education is very important point here uh, yes sir Dr. Batal, please go ahead. Another thing is discipline amongst the society, amongst the community. No, we don't want to be disciplined. In oh, our no. community, the people they don't go from primary health care to secondary health care to tertiary health care. They are yeah. directly jumping to tertiary health care facility. In yeah. other countries, like in UK, first you have to go to GP. Unless GP refers. you to that particular consultant or specialist the patient is unable to approach directly to the consultant or to the higher tertiary healthcare facility so that system is lacking in india from primary healthcare to secondary healthcare to tertiary healthcare this system needs to be implemented by the community by the government by the society then only the burden which is coming on the corporate hospitals big hospitals will get reduced and simple things like hydrocele appendicitis these cases can be resolved at secondary healthcare facility yeah yeah true true I mean that kind of gradation is important 
and people need to know and it that that requires a perception change and that also requires training properly at various levels and that requires proper infrastructuring by the government itself saying that you know and having standards i mean people who are watching this program may be thinking what all this has to do with violence against doctors the truth of the matter is it is not it's a one factor thing it is multifactorial thing there is a system issue or infrastructure issue that we have been talking there is a patient side issue the education and understanding and their attitude their perceptions about doctors and there is a doctor issue how doctors are approaching the patients how doctors are communicating the patients so it's a multifactorial thing rajesh has stayed quite for a long time so let's give him an opportunity to say something and along with that i also want to invite miss manjusha um a patient advocate who was treated a patient was treated recently by dr rajesh at uh, sunshine hospitals hyderabad and i think it was a very difficult patient it took almost a month or more uh to provide care and do what is needed and sunshine hospital has done a great job in um keeping the cost to the minimum for the patient providing the best care with minimal cost and all that so miss manjusha has then written a facebook post about dr rajesh and sunshine hospitals and the reason for inviting miss manjusha to join us today is i think the public uh the patients and families in general they need to hear the good things that are happening in the hospital you know when you look at all these reviews <laughs> what happens is those people like for example you're talking about doctor ratings and all those things right usually it it doesn't matter whether it's a doctor lawyer or it's a restaurant uh or something else who writes reviews are the people who hate <laughs> you know whatever happened so those are the people who have a motivation to say this is really terrible this guy is bad but they don't talk about all the 99 times that dr batalwar or dr tharun or dr rajesh or someone else has done an amazing job they only look at the one percent you know that happened and it's terrible and all of a sudden there is a big uh talk in the media and everywhere saying that you know this guy is uh, a rakshas essentially that is how they portray it but they don't see all the great things that they have done whether the hospitals or the doctors so this communication also need to happen this awareness has to happen so i really appreciate ms manjusha to come here uh, voluntarily and uh, wanting to share her experience please go ahead ma'am hi everybody uh, so i'm meeting dr rajesh also for the first time i guess uh, on the video uh thanks for having me over here so i must say that there are few points that i really loved about dr rajesh and uh, how he handled the whole scenario so generally my perception about uh, you know hospitals or doctors or doctors are very busy and then it's almost like that mechanical uh, communication where we wait we go into the room and then we meet and so in that whole process we do not uh, get a chance to have that uh, holistic perspective about the case and even uh, we may be forgetting few questions that we really want to ask them and then the doctor is gone by then so these are the kind of issues we actually face i lived in usa for about 15 years where i am used to being educated about uh, the conditions that we have or uh, you know what are the uh, i mean we still make the decisions but we are uh, presented with options and we make the choices based on what uh, what education we get from the doctors so that is how i am used to but uh, things here are uh, slightly different you guys have been already discussing about a lot of that and uh, in this particular case my teacher's husband um, he met with a serious accident and he got admitted in a 
very serious condition into a particular hospital and uh, for like about uh, almost more than 24 hours we were literally struggling to understand the severity of it and whether uh, he's going to make it or not and this particular family had been uh, they are, they cannot afford the kind of uh, you know uh, the uh, expenses also basically um, they both had been jobless for the entire covid uh, year and they recently had uh, twins. And all I was thinking is what would happen to the entire family if this person, uh, you know, doesn't make it. And uh, somehow one of my contacts actually uh, knows Dr. Rajesh and uh, he spoke to him. And uh, he was pretty great about like analyzing the reports. We approached uh, several different doctors in the whole process, asking if there is a chance for this guy to survive. And uh, most of them said no. And uh, First point about his uh, uh, diagnosis and his uh, capability as a doctor is he analyzed the situation and said he's too young. So there are chances. We have seen several cases. So let's look at it uh, in a holistic perspective and see whether he's going to survive or not. And there's a lot of compassion there because, I mean, these people have to uh, take a lot of loans if they have to, you know, may come up with all the medical expenses and if he doesn't make it, then it's like a mute point and the girl has to survive with all these loans uh, for the rest of the life. And so he actually looked at all the reports, whether it is not just the uh, liver aspect of the issue, but he also talked to the neurologist and then he made sure that the brain, he would be recovering from coma. He had chances. Everything is a guess, right, at that point. But still he made like a uh, guess that there is, there, are, there is higher probability of him surviving. And even after uh, we moved him to Sunshine at that point, it, right from the day we moved him uh, into Sunshine, and even till now, he's still not out of the woods. Uh, Dr. Rajesh had been continuously supporting him and his family, uh, giving the appropriate information at the appropriate times. So one of the most important thing that I really loved about uh, Dr. Rajesh, not just for the clinical or his skill perspective, but his communication. He would just put in a one message saying that, you know, surgery went fine and uh, it, it's a success. That's all we need to know because it's, it's a lot of anxiety issue for the, uh, uh, you know, for the patients, uh, you know, friends and family or whatever you want to call because they are always kept in the dark and finding information is like such a uh, big deal. And when we get that just one liner from somebody saying, hey, the surgery is a success and, uh, you know, it's going to be another two months, but still at least we know that it's a success and we are relieved for that point. So that compassion aspect is something I really love. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh. And then the third aspect of it is uh, the, uh, again, the compassion, but the humanity side of things. So these people really couldn't afford and we had been doing a lot of fundraisers and stuff like that. And he did everything that he could from the hospital side and then, you know, uh, reducing the bills to the extent possible. I mean, medicine has become very expensive. And that's the reality of the current day because everything comes with a cost, right? I mean, nobody can uh, work in vacuum. But they did whatever they could to reduce these costs. And I really appreciate that. And that is what made me write that post. Even once uh, we shifted him to the care center, uh, he did not uh, wash his hands off. He's still uh, supporting us by you know, giving the advice as and when needed. So it's like an end-to-end -end, uh, case. I mean, he actually looked at him and uh, we are hoping that in another couple of weeks, uh, he would be able to sit and uh, recover and probably go home. But uh, it's not like a one-time thing. And he, uh, Dr. Rajesh had always been available in making, uh, making him survive. So basically I call him as a savior literally i mean he literally gave a life and saved that family and that is what i really uh, liked about the whole thing you you may throw all the money you want at a patient but uh, you will not be able to uh, i mean if if you cannot uh, make them survive right then it's a, a huge void in the family's uh, lives uh, after that point 
So from all those aspects, I really appreciate uh, Dr. Rajesh. And I didn't realize, but I, I mean, I wrote the post because I wanted to write and uh, I just so happened that it uh, came out on Doctor's Day. But truly appreciate Dr. Rajesh, really appreciate whatever you have done and uh, what Guruva Edigaru and Sunshine Hospital has done. I mean, uh, all the support, I truly appreciate that. And uh, I really do not want you to ever lose that and uh, continue doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Manjusha. That's a really nice of you to uh, share your experience. And I want to say one thing and then I'll let the other doctors uh, speak about this. But, you know, and there are many other people like Manjusha in Dr. Rajesh's panel, Dr. Batalwar's panel, Dr. Tharun's panel, who they have saved thousands of lives in their career. Now, people need to understand this because there is one mistake that happened, because there is one misunderstanding that happened. We should not completely say, oh, this is a terrible hospital or a terrible doctor. If there is a consistent bad behavior, yes, that is a totally different thing. You know, when the, repeat, the mistakes are repeated again and again, despite bringing them to the notice of whether it is an organization or to the person, that is when it is a problem. But if we start inviting patients, there'll be a thousand manjushas to share good things about different doctors here. And <clears throat> I think this kind of sharing of the positive information, I think is important for the public to see, oh, actually, the mistakes that are happening is the tip of the iceberg. There is much more that is being constantly done beneath the surface that we never see it. And that which is not seen, I think that is what we need to bring to light and help people see. So thanks so much for sharing this experience. Please go ahead. I think uh, Dr. Batalwar raised his hand and then Dr. Rajesh, if you want to say something about this. Yeah. Uh, like and yes, by the way, we have 19 more minutes. We'll close the session sharply at, um, you know, for me, it is 8 a.m. For you, it is going to be 8.30 p.m. Um, but uh, give me five minutes to summarize in the end. So you have approximately 10 to 15 minutes to say what you want to say. Everyone else. Yeah, yeah. one minute. Uh, I was just about to tell about a dangerous case. Like... Um, Right. Uh, a primary consultant should triage his patients, whatever patients he has under him. Like uh, right now, some eight or nine patients under me, which is the most serious case. Spend more time with that. Hmm. There should be no limits to treat a patient, to spend a time to the patient. How I will tell? That dangerous case, we had to operate second surgery in just a matter of five days. His name is Sujat Ali. I'm sorry to say that, but uh, uh, Sujat Ali that family is very, very emotional with a bad background, like rowdies and all, whatever it is. So he went, uh, without our knowledge, he is deteriorating like anything after the second surgery also. He is deteriorating like anything. So they are coming every 15 minutes, we need to counsel them. So ultimately, what we have to do is to stay overnight, yesterday overnight in the hospital with the patient. That helped a lot. Luckily, the patient has some improvement and he is okay now. This kind of efforts also will calm the patient. Yesterday, day before yesterday, they are very aggressive and today they are calm. Even if he dies, we will come out of that. You understand? The, otherwise, it's a very big mess. So we have, we should not have any limits that time the, from morning 10 to evening 6, I will be in hospital. After that, only over phone, switch off the WhatsApp in the night. In that way, you cannot help many people. We cannot I think the pressure, then your name, fame, money, whatever is all included. It's a whole package. Like, uh, that's what uh, I want to tell. That, that's a good point that you made, Rajesh. A lot of times about is this communication and compassion. Now, there is also something called compassion fatigue that everyone should know. Because 
Now, let us say this is your 10th year of practice or 15th year of practice or 5th year, whatever it is. Uh, depending on the person and the experience that they had and how they are being treated and depending on the hospital, you know, and so many other factors, depending on that person's uh, mental state. You see, there's so many factors that determines how a person behaves in a situation. Uh, compassion fatigue is essentially after you take care of it, take care of it, take care of it, you get burnt out. And you're like, I don't, I really, I can't, I don't care anymore. You know, it happens. And uh, statistics show that, especially in a ICU setting, I'm giving American statistic, I don't have Indian statistic. In ICU setting, there is a 40% burnout rate of doctors. And you know, these ICU doctors are intubating patients, mechanically ventilating, taking care of people who are literally dying every day and bringing back them to life. And it takes a toll on doctors. It takes a toll on doctors. And it is important for the medical society as a whole, you know, the hospitals, the organizations, the government to think about how to support doctors right, to provide them that net of support so that they can continue to be great doctors, like what that they are supposed to do, right? So this is something that I want everyone to think about, everyone to think about. Uh, Dr. Tharun, do you have any comments on this? Yeah, uh, as you said, there is a point where, uh, you know, beyond that, uh, for everybody, there is fatigue. In spite of all these this COVID situations, everybody did great. There were yeah. people who were calling us at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, morning, early morning, 3 o'clock, saying that I had 99 temperature and now I see it is 99.1. See, it, it doesn't matter uh, you know, what the, it, it, lo it might look silly, but he is in home quarantine and he's, uh, he's fearing death because uh, this time death is just around the house. Somebody of their kitchen can all somebody of their friends yeah. ever died all the time. So, uh, in spite of all, this, we had to get up in the morning, come back to our work, and and the stress work stress is hardly uh, is all there. We are is always a stress zone, and we always have it. Of course, I enjoy it uh, because I'm used to it. And see, if there is a point of time where I can't pick my phone, when I'm forced that it happens. So uh, that point of uh, thing, uh, there must be some, it depends on uh, what we say is like uh, uh, for the scenario in India, for the doctor patient ratio, this cannot be uh, taken care of. Even how much ever passionate you might be, you might be, you, you might, you can concentrate on one, two, three patients, but not, uh, might be if you have a less uh, sick, uh, less number of sick patients, I think you can take. But suppose you have two, three people sinking down at the same time, they expect you to be there at the bedside. They can't do it. It's like that. Right. It's there must be something which uh, has to, you know, look into it. And People also, it is practice specific too. It is practice yeah, yeah. specific yeah. too, depending on you know what kind of practice. If you're emergency medicine physician, you have a different mm -hmm. uh, set of rules. You know, once the patient leaves the emergency room, you're out of uh, picture typically. And if surgeon, it is a different. And then if it is a cardiologist or an endocrinologist, it is different. So these need to be very individually tailored and focused how to handle these situations. And this kind of discussion just needs to happen more often and come up with protocols or solutions that makes it uh, viable uh, you know, to implement any program to help. Yes, Dr. Battlebar, please. One tagline, yeah. more than healthcare, human care. That yes. is important. All the doctors' fraternity, if they learn it by heart, that they should treat equally and give more importance to human care. Healthcare is taken care of by all. Automatically. Yeah, automatically. So that yeah. is important. That is very important. You know, I think it is just not for healthcare, honestly speaking, to solve all the problems in the world. There is only one thing that human beings need to do. That is be more humanistic. It's pretty simple. We just need to live up to 
our own definition what we labeled ourselves as human beings and humanistic but often that is not the case there is greed in the society there is a lot of ego in people right and there are many other negative qualities in people and that is what leads to these unnecessary complications in society just take for example during covid people were selling remdesivir in black market for 60000 70000 what kind of nonsense is that when your neighbor is dying that you're trying to take advantage of them and i know some big people too you know who are involved in this uh who have a lot of money it doesn't happen just like that it's usually a racket you know a lot of people get together to make this happen so at the end of the day my answer to almost every single problem in this world is we just need to be more humanistic lessen our egos i'm just not talking about doctors the patients the politicians every single person in the world all human being lessen our ego and learn how to be happy and calm in your life if they do these three things 90% of the problems will be solved 90% of the problem uh subhakar any last words yes from your Can side you hear me yeah yeah uh as i to speak about to on behalf of the patient yeah. i am also telling to the patient group that violence is not the solution is never the, the patient if the patient feels i am not treated properly or i am not justified so there are means of uh, other rat farms so violence is not the solution and i i be strongly believe that dr kiran so there are many laws protecting the doctors and there are some laws are going to come into the force in very soon so mm-hmm. one message we have to uh, spread in the community is raising hand against the doctor is a punishable offense yeah that is the message we need to uh, spread the news into the community it may not be the one day or two day but repeatedly it has to uh, like these programs many it has to come into uh, live as well as there are many discussions has to be happen what doctors are sacrificing what they are doing and how they are work for the hum- human beings as batwar sir told humanity humanity is the more th- important thing so raising voice or raising hand against the doctors is a not at all a solution there are other type of platforms available to raise the voice as well as the to file the any complaint that is either um, consumer forum or uh, criminal uh, cases or something like that and one more thing is the medicine cannot cure 100% all the diseases people has to understand that there is a plus and minus some people will come up with a good good result and some people will may may not affect that treatment suppose you take the plasma therapy in covid cases so we don't know what is the result of plasma therapy so the doctors tried the plasma therapy there are some patients come out from through the plasma therapy and there are some patient who did not get the uh, positive result through the plasma therapy these are the two things i want to reiterate in this forums yeah violence is never an answer it doesn't matter what the situation is it may make you feel better in that moment but you will face the consequences whether it is violence against doctors violence against another person or something else it comes back to you in a different way maybe you will get punished or you know you will face other consequences so violence is never the answer for any problem for any problem and uh, yeah you know there are there are a few themes uh, because i think we barely have now 7 minutes i want to uh, close this session with a overview about what we actually learned today and the future direction that we need to take first of all i want to thank every single panel member here including the patient advocate manjusha for being 
here and uh, help us explore this problem. I am not under the delusion that we are going to solve this problem all at once today, but I think the direction that we are taking will help uh, guide many people who watch this one, uh, what needs to be done. So the key things, number one, from the doctor's side, what we need to do, be more humanistic, spend more time with patients, be compassionate, upgrade ourselves with our knowledge, right? And that is from the doctor's side, I believe is very important, giving them enough attention and time. Number two, coming from the uh, patient side, they need to also educate themselves about health. They need to take precautions about what needs to be done. For example, during COVID, everyone is saying, take the vaccine, wear the mask. If you don't, then it's going to be a problem. The same thing with diabetes, for example, control the sugars by eating less or following the proper diabetic diet, doing exercise. There are patient related things that they can do in general to improve their health that will reduce the amount of frustration and the patient expectation needs to change. They need to understand our healthcare system better. Now coming from the infrastructure side, hospital side, government side, what needs to be done is transparency. Transparency. This is what is going to cost for this and everything should be clear there. Then people know I'm going here it is going to cost me so much money. And this is, this is what is being given. I think that transparency, I think is definitely missing. And even if the intention probably is not to hide it, but if it is not brought to the forefront and communicated to public about, hey, the drug company is asking us so much money to give us this medication. That is the reason it is costing you so much. Whether you want or not, it is up to you. But this is what it is. This kind of um, transparency and communication and also uh, from uh, infrastructure side, building more medical colleges, providing proper training and providing training to the doctors themselves about communication. Communication and other important aspects of healthcare and some amount of uh, psychology, patient psychology, how to understand it. When we come out of medical college, right? <laughs> we don't understand any of those things because no one teaches us. I still remember my first time, you know, more than 10 years ago, when I was uh, fresh out of my internal medicine residency practicing, the way I used to teach with, uh, treat, the way, the way I used to talk to patients, was much different than now. Now I have developed a sense of a balanced way of talking to them and breaking the news. And sometimes these things can only be uh, developed by experience. No amount of knowledge or teaching is not going to be sufficient, but we can supplement. We can reduce uh, the experience time for very little if we actually provide good knowledge about how to do these things and training in medical colleges. So all these different factors need to be considered. And finally, uh, violence at all levels should be condemned, no matter what the reason is, that is not the solution. And it is a punishable offense and that needs to be known to people. Aggressively, this needs to be informed everywhere, proper awareness about it. And, and of all the things, ultimately, we all, whether doctor, nurse, patient, politician, if we all are more humanistic, that itself is going to solve lots of problems. In general, I think that is a summary that I have gathered through this session. Um, any last words? We have two minutes. Any last words from anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Whenever some incident happens, uh, like many people don't doctors will support doctors 
like uh, opposite people i mean they will support themselves all the time it's not the mistake of people who attack so attitude and all like uh, we can't change that we can't change that so to decrease this kind of incidents what is the best thing we can do is the as we thought a uh, uh, properly communicate increase the knowledge of the primary consultant or the person who is treating there then communicating the attendants attend treatment aspect is one part and almost equal aspect is the communication with the attenders and uh, proper communication then as sar told um we have to be more uh hum- human uh, i mean uh, human to treat the patient humanly and then coming to the financial aspect we have to help each and every patient not only the patient who has big bills small bills also as far as possible there are many ways to help them decreasing your fee or talk to the hospital uh, administration and all so these things will decrease the attack on doctors yeah thank you dr charan you have anything you want to say yeah oh, oh. what 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 the gist you have told is all uh, right uh, you should treat them passionately in spite of whatever uh, stress you are in the experience matters you learn a lot you tend to in spite of they become aggressive you try to cool them that's what basically they need because they are in pain they are in stress so that is the uh, uh, main part of it so whatever you are somebody has come come to you it is your responsibility to take care of them in whatever way you can it may not be Thank possible you. all the time because it is we are uh, human beings too doctors are human beings too yeah human beings too so uh, that, that that is the primary thing what we have to got it got in it. whatever yeah yeah thank you dr batalwar and then this is the last yeah uh, thing yeah go ahead constitutional right of all the citizens for getting free health care is the solution like in other countries in uk nhs hospitals they are meant for the uk population yeah because the health is a constitutional right over there whereas yeah. in india health is a state subject health yeah. is taken over by the state that particular state is spending the x amount on the health yeah. infrastructure health facility if it is amended in the constitution that the health is the constitutional right of the indian person then there will be total change and all health facilities which run by the government by the municipal corporations will come to that level of the accreditation or standard and quality of the healthcare will improve and the government will take the total responsibility of the health whether it is preventive health it is curative health or it is after that also so yeah maintenance yeah is, yeah everything if it is taken over because government of india is taking good amount of taxation from the population they can increase the tax the, the gdp that is GDP. being spent yeah. on healthcare yeah. is 1% yeah. in india yeah there, there is a proposal by someone saying that if it is actually they make it 2.5 or 3% that is going to give enough oomph to build yeah. the infrastructure and provide the yeah. right thing correct and you know what i want to do for future direction what i really want to do is i really loved everyone's uh expertise and ideas in this um zoom conference today everyone made such amazing points subhakar tarun batalwar rajesh everyone uh, manjusha so what i think uh, i'm thinking for the future sessions is maybe we need to take one aspect communication corporate hospital bills uh humanistic how to be physician burnout patient education like this take topics now divide it and then 
provide more awareness, jump deeper into those topics. Maybe that is what I want to do in the near future. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk again pretty soon. Bye. Thank you. Take care.